Welcome to Family Bible Time. We're in Ho- uh, Hosea. We're in Amos. Amos <laughs> chapter 4. We're also in Psalm 149 and 150. Oh, sadness. I'm enjoying the Psalms. I hope you have been too. Let's pray and let's go. Lord, thank you for your word, which is so rich and full. I pray for your help now and your forgiveness and your enabling. And just thank you for your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan. That's nice, isn't it? Who is he talking to? He's talking to the women in Israel. Now, let's get into this. Who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, bring that we may drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that, behold, the days are coming upon you when they shall take you away with hooks, even the last of you with fish hooks. And you shall go out through the breaches, each one straight ahead, the breaches of the holes in the walls, Mm -hmm. each one straight ahead, and you shall be cast out into Harmon, Mm -hmm. declares the Lord. Come to Bethel and transgress, to Gilgal and multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving that, that of that which is leavened. Hang on a minute. God didn't allow them to give leavened food, leavened bread in their offerings, did he? So what's he saying here? All this is kind of telling them, well... This is what you do. Go on, go on then, do it. And and Bethel, where's that? That's the altar with the golden cow, isn't it? Mm. The golden idol, a uh, calf idol. Anyway, come to Bethel and transgress, and then sacrifice of thanksgiving, which is leavened, verse 5, and proclaim free will offerings and publish them, For so you love to do, O people of Israel, declares the Lord. Now this is interesting, isn't it? Is is God just being sarcastic here? Or is God saying, look, you're determined to do that? All right, go ahead and do it. Is this God giving them over to their sin. I think it is. I think this is God um, handing them over to do what is only going to bring them more and more judgment. That's really scary. To think that God might say to you, all right then, go on then, go ahead and do it Mm. and see what comes to you. Mm. Wow. Wow. Verse 6, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities. That's not a good thing, by Mm. the way. Cleanness of teeth is not because they brushed their teeth. Mm. That's a good cleanness of teeth. But when your teeth are clean because you've not had anything to eat, that's not so good. Mm. And lack of bread in all your places. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I also withheld rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. I would send rain on one city and send no rain on another city. One field would have rain, and the field on which it did not rain would wither. So two or three cities would wander to another city to drink water and would not be satisfied. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I struck you with blight and mildew. Your many gardens and your vineyards, your fig trees and your olive trees, the locust devoured. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I sent among you a pestilence after the manner of Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword and carried away your horses, and I made the stench of your camp go up into your nostrils. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I overthrew some of you as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. 
and you were as a brand plucked out of the burning, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. Therefore thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms the mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what is his thought, who makes the morning darkness and treads on the heights of the earth, the Lord, the God of hosts is his name. Whoa. Okay. I mean, this is serious stuff, isn't it? This is God. He would say remonstrating. Remonstrating with them. Pleading with them. He's... He's trying warning... And then he's trying, you would say, um, how would you describe this? I think parents know what this is like if you parent older children. Um, when you have to say to a stubborn child, all right, go on then. Go ahead and you see what comes to you. When a child won't take correction, when a child won't take instruction, when they won't take warning, when they won't take discipline, one of the last steps of, of parental censure is to say, all right, then you want to go running around in bare feet you won't listen to me. Go ahead. But when you cut your feet, do not, do not expect sympathy from me. Because I warned you, you wouldn't do it. I warned you again, you wouldn't wear your shoes. I told you no, no, that you've never done this. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that's why I'm picking this as an example. I heard this from a, a pastor who had to deal with um, wayward sons and one particularly stubborn son and so at the end of many disciplines and remonstrations this was the final censure all right and then when he went out and he cut his feet his son cut his feet really badly he had to bear the consequences because he just wouldn't listen he didn't get the sympathy from his dad that he might have hoped for at that moment. And you can guess afterwards who it was. <laughs> anyway, um, this is serious, isn't it? This is God saying that to the nation. He's saying, all right, go ahead. Go, go, go and worship your gods. Go on. Go to, go to Bethel. Fine. See what's coming. Wow. Wondering as well, you know, in different places it talks about how you, you know, you kind of become like who you worship. And they were worshiping the cows. I wonder if that's why he calls you them cows, cows of Bashan. Because they're becoming like the cows. I don't know. I don't know. Just a thought. I don't know, but cow has been a yeah an insult for a woman ever that's since, for sure. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for Psalm 149? This is so much nicer. Mm -hmm. Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the godly. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Mm. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honour for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. 
can you just check to see whether we're supposed to be doing some 150? I was, we are for sure, because mm -hmm. I was reading it in the night and it was, <laughs> it was many hours ago now. Okay. I heard it twice. You heard it twice? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure I heard it, but <laughs> obviously uh, I was, uh, Let me double trip that. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, let me just comment on Psalm 149. This is so, so helpful. Yeah. Such a blessing to me. Okay. Uh, the early hours of this morning. Verse 4. For the Lord takes pleasure mm -hmm. in his people. That's what I was saying wow. to the Lord about 4 o'clock this morning. Really? God? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Does, would God take pleasure in you, in me? He adorns the humble with salvation. Wow. Now, this is a different note. There are many different notes in the Psalms. There are some Psalms which are written in a minor key. Mm -hmm. And they're quite mournful. They're quite sad. They're quite... Um, they're quite doleful. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are limping laments. Where you can imagine the psalmist is, is kind of sobbing their way through the psalm. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very strong. God is our f our fortress, uh, a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Duh. Some of them, like this, are just so, so incredibly joyful. Some of them are joyful with, you can imagine the flutes playing, mm -hmm. but this one, verse 3, tambourine. And lyre. In, in Psalm 150, we're going to have crashing cymbals and sounding cymbals. And, but in verse 3 of Psalm 149, dancing. Mm. You say, is that okay? <laughs> well, it must be okay. <laughs> At least it was. No, don't get me wrong, we're not going to have a praise and dance team in the church on <laughs> Sunday. But this kind of exuberant praise, uh, that's a good word, exuberant, it's, it's exultational, it's, it's so full of joy... Verse 5, let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. I was in bed still reading this in the early hours of the morning and thinking, I, I need to have this kind of joy be true of me from time to time does it have to be true of me all the time no that would be fake false um but it needs to be true sometimes it needs to be true when i meditate upon these kind of truths mm -hmm. it would be right wouldn't it to be so full of joy that you felt like dancing when your mind is full of the of the truth that's in this psalm that the Lord takes pleasure in his people whoa I mean it almost feels like it can't be true but it is true it's there in the Bible so um, this, is, this is good now verse 6 puts it into a little bit of context and the context is definitely Old Covenant. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. Well, some would say, listen, um, if you're going to say let's have a praise and dance team, let's also, um, let's also have a, 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 a two-edged sword 
team <laughs> to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment upon the peoples. Right, how do we navigate that? That's an interesting question, isn't it? So this is Old Covenant. This is under the law. This is people like David. Well, they were a nation. They had a king. They had to, they had to execute vengeance on the nations. That was their job. People of Israel were there to do this. We're not. But does the Lord still take delight in his people? Yeah. Is it fitting for his people to be so full of praise that they want to shout and dance even? I would say yes. If the truth is still true, the praise is still fitting. And I've got to say it, that is just so very different from the kind of dance that would come, uh, that we, you would find in a club or mm. in our youth in, in, at the disco. Why? Well, because people who go to a club or to a disco who want to dance, to, to lose themselves in dance are doing so either for the pure sensual experience of just losing yourself in, the, in that kind of the trance of dance um, or there's a sexual aspect to it which is huge it's either men and women dancing with each other in order to kind of get close to each other and be um, you have the opportunity to be sexually attracted to each other and, and enjoy that kind of environment or to be provocative, to show you their moves in order to show off and be attractive to someone else and all that's involved in that. Sinful, sensual, sexually motivated world. That's got nothing to do with this, has it? And this can have nothing to do with that. When I see people uh, wanting to dance at weddings, um, I, I've got to say, people who, who want to dance... I mean, dancing at a wedding makes more sense to me than any other kind of dancing, any other kind of occasion for dancing, because it's a, it's a moment of great joy. It's a, it's a moment of great celebration. I remember... The last time I ever felt like dancing was at my graduation. I was just so happy. Not not my graduation from seminary. We didn't dance then. But when I graduated as an osteopath, just at the end of a long period of study and such a relief, I felt so happy to be finished. I felt like dancing. And I don't dance. I, don't, I can't dance. So I, 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 just, I just felt like it because I was so happy, so relieved. I think it's very natural, isn't it? It's a natural release to want to to dance out of extreme joy. That kind of dancing, you would say. The dancing which proceeds from just overwhelming joy. And in this case, a dancing that proceeds from an overwhelming joy in the Lord I don't think, I can't see any reason why the Lord would have a problem with that. And I don't, I don't think it's, it's any reason why we should have a problem with it, if God doesn't have a problem with it. That's so very different from the kind of dancing that people bring to their weddings. It's so weird to see Christians um, playing music and entering into dancing which is driven by a very, very different spirit. So can I put that in as a warning at the same time as I'm going to follow the scripture and say I can't see any reason why dancing per se is wrong. All right, Psalm 150. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. 
Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's a fitting, triumphal note to the mm. Psalms, isn't it? Mm. Didn't mention an organ, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mention a piano either. <laughs> I guess piano is a stringed instrument, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, an organ is a wind instrument, isn't it? <laughs> um, but it it's so interesting. If you're gonna by the way, if you're gonna take the regulative principle in worship, mm -hmm. You're, you, you're going to really struggle. The regulative principle says unless it's, it's unless it's in the Bible, you you cannot do it. Well, um, they they would say that unless it's there in the New Testament, you can't do it. And and so, a lot of people who follow the regulative principle of worship don't have instruments in in worship because they don't find any instruments mentioned in the New Testament. And so you have exclusive psalmody because you don't find any hymns either. Well, there are possibly one or two, but they can't find any hymns in the New Testament. So they'll have, they'll only sing psalms. I would point out that you don't find any tunes in the Bible either. So that kind of puts a big thing in the way of that regulative principle but if you don't follow the regulative principle and I don't um, in worship I, I come back to the Old Testament and I say look God is not anti-music mm. this it is silly to say God is anti-instruments that that musical instruments are somehow worldly that instruments that have to do with rhythm, like cymbals and tambourines uh, are carnal and fleshly. These are some of the arguments people make, and very otherwise good people who uh, whom I respect and admire their evangelistic zeal and their love for the Lord and their faithfulness. And yet they make these arguments which are just unbiblical. It's like... Somehow a guitar is ungodly. Somehow drums or, or you know, so sort of any instrument that that involves r rhythm is just sensual and carnal. Well, you cannot make that argument mm. and and maintain it in the light of what you see here in the Old Testament. Is God anti this? Is this somehow inherently wrong? Obviously not. They had choir masters, they had music directors, they had musicians, they had musical instruments, abounding musical instruments. Mm. You're going to say they even had dancing. Yep. Yep, I, I would concede they even had dancing. And I wouldn't be able to say dancing is inherently sinful. I just, I'm not going to engineer it. I'm not going to whip it up, but I'm not going to frown at someone who's moving their body in church because they're so happy. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just going to, if they're worshipping the Lord and full of joy and they just find themselves jumping up and down, okay, that, that, that's not inherently wrong. I mean, everything has to be done decently and in order. We get that from the New Testament. We don't have chaos. It's not about us. We don't have pride. We don't have showing off in singing. We don't have people coming up to the front to show their moves and wiggle their bottoms in front of everyone else. I'm not going to have that. Of course not. It's just weird and wrong and, you know, they're... Well, I mean, the people. I'm, I'm saying that <laughs> seriously. <laughs> seriously, people do that. Okay. You think you think I'm being funny, but actually, people do that. People go go to the front of the church in some churches and and just 
do their moves for everyone to admire. They literally dance up to the altar and dance their way up to give their offering. And, and he's like, no, 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 don't show off. Don't draw attention to yourself. But if someone's so happy they're dancing for joy, don't give them a, a stare that would kill them. You know, you have just... We can do that, can't we? So we can be so stiff and so um, so stern that we become unbiblical. I'm just going to say, let's not do that, but let's not make it about us. Let's have everything done decently and in order. Let's have it done in humility. God adorns the humble with salvation, but he takes pleasure in his people. That's so amazing. We should jump for joy. Mm. <laughs> Lord, we pray that we would have this kind of joy. The joy of the Lord. And it would be our strength. And that you wouldn't allow us to f fall into one ditch. Mm. One side of the road. Or the other ditch on the other. Lord, please help keep us on the road. That it is the Bible. And enable us to be those who... Uh, can praise you and worship you with all the many different notes that we find in these wonderful psalms. Mm. Exuberance, exaltation, yes. We pray for that. We pray for that joy of the Holy Spirit. But we pray also that you would give us the strong, steady, confident mm. notes and that even, Lord, enable us to know how to lament how to mourn, how to weep, how to grieve, how to cry to you from a position of persecution. And Lord, we pray that you would allow us always, at all times, to be worshipping you. Thank you for this time in the Psalms. Thank you for teaching us. Please continue to teach us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we are done another day. Oh, the Psalms are over. We'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.